tie up another Carrie Stevens pattern today. This is the Red Devil. This is also out of the Hilliard book. Uh, this is a nice kind of darker pattern with the red and the blue in this, and I'm still convinced that feathers that she used were a little bit lighter in their tone, maybe a little more pastel. Don't know how much that would make a difference. These are some American hen, or excuse me, American rooster capes and whiting American rooster capes. Colors are kind of bright. Still researching some of that, trying to find some more information, but in the meantime, thought it was an interesting pattern to tie. That is the Red Devil. I'll get started. <music> hook in the vise. This is a Mustad R79. The old number was a 94720. Uh, it's a 9x long streamer hook. This is a size 6. Go ahead and debarb the hook. I'm going to start the Red Devil with some white thread. This is a UTC 140 denier in white. As I have a tail on this and a floss body, I'm not going to concern myself with laying down a nice smooth thread body here because I'm going to have just a little bit of a bump back here because of the tail. It's going to keep me from having to wrap down here quite as much. I'm going to tie in the tag and the tag is silver tinsel. I'm using a Danville silver and gold mylar tinsel in a size 12. The rib is also the same tinsel. I'm going to tie this in with the gold side up. And advance my thread down to a little bit past the point of the hook. Bring my thread back up to where I tied that in. Now I can apply that for my tag. Bring that in with a couple, two, three wraps. Trim away the excess and I'll tie in my tail. Tail on the Red Devil some red hackle fibers. The wing on the Red Devil is a blue hackle with a red hackle on the outside. So I'm just using some of the same red hackles from the same, this is a whiting uh, American rooster neck. I'm using some of the same hackles to provide the barbs for the tail. Get these out 90 degrees to the rachis so that the tips are evened up. And then I'll peel those away. Depending on how long these are, I generally go for a pretty full feather and get the barbs off the lower section here where they're the longest. I want the tail to stick out the back maybe about 3 eighths to half an inch, something like that. So that's going to put these butt ends just a little bit into the body. Because these, when they are stripped off the rachis, they tend to be a little bit thick down here as well as they take some of the keratin off with the, the rachis. I'm going to trim those all off at an angle so that it's just a little bit smoother. You end up with a little bit less of a bump. A couple wraps to secure that in. I do want to make certain that I am covering up the back end, or I should say the front end of this tag, so that when I do the body and the rib, uh, there's no thread wraps under there showing. Now I'm going to tie in the rib. It's the same Mylar gold tinsel, gold and silver tinsel. 
I'm going to tie this in also with the gold side up. You can leave these long the length of the body if you want to, just to smooth that off a little bit more. The body itself is a floss. I'm using a Danville four strand rayon in red. I'm going to use all four strands of this. And again, since I have just a little bit of a bump there anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and pull the ends of that floss just right down here, a little bit in front of the tail, the butt ends of the tail. Try and give that a little something that might help taper that down just a little bit. Now I'm going to advance my thread forward, flatten out my thread a little bit, and that will help. And get cover up the hook shank and get me from one end to the other a little bit sooner. I'm using a white thread on this because of the red floss. Whenever you're using floss in a fly for the body, you want to keep in mind that the bronze hook. And a dark thread underneath will darken up that floss once it gets in the water. So using a white thread will help to maintain the color of the floss as much as possible. So now I'll apply both the body and the rib. You'll notice that I am stroking out the floss fibers here. This is to get all of them in the same equal tension. When you're wrapping a floss body in like this, if you find that as you're wrapping, these front edge of these fibers start to spread out a little bit, it's because they're not all under the same tension in the same direction. Take your time with this. Initially, when you start, usually you don't have any problems. I find that this time of the year, I do still, I get some that will creep out in front of me, as well as, you can see these two here, just broke off. And that's because drier hands tend to break the fibers of this uh, very, very thin rayon. Really no big deal, especially if it's a fishing fly. Even as a framing fly, you can trim away and pluck away those little fibers that happen to stick out a little bit. So with the body and the rib in place, I can now change over to my orange thread, the head on 
The red devil is orange with black stripe. So I misspoke there. The uh, head is actually black with an orange band. But as I've mentioned in other videos, we want to have an orange base on this. Otherwise, the uh, orange would be darkened up. So we're going to tie in the belly right now. And the, it's just some white bucktail. I'm going to get you a thin clump, maybe about a quarter of a pencil or so. Get the tips fairly even. You could stack these if you want. I tend not to because I like the tapered look out here as this is you know wet and in the water. I'm going to tie that in so it's no more than the length of the tail. I go just a little bit shorter. Secure that on the underside. And we'll trim away the excess. Many of her Carrie Stevens uh, streamer patterns have a usually an orange or red or even just a black band, some sort of band in it that is considered to be her signature. And often, as I said, and I've done this too for years, where I tied in, I used black thread to finish the fly off, and then tied in the orange or red band. Again, the problem is the black thread darkens it up. So I have adopted, if it's a red band, I'll have a red thread at this stage. If it's orange, obviously I'm orange or whatever. And then I'll just put the two black bands on to have just a center orange band and the colors definitely look better. The hackle or the throat on the red devil is just some red hackle. I'm using some red schloppen. I have three clumps here. I want those to go about halfway down the body. There's going to be one clump for underneath and one on each side. Throat in place, I'll secure all this in and smooth the head off here. We have part of the wing is what some people consider an under wing, and that is some peacock curl. Just four to six strands of peacock curl. We're going to even those tips up. You don't want to cut those. You want to have the tapered rough tips on those. I'm going to tie that in so it's about the length of the underbody, the underbelly. Get those wrapped in and secured and trim away the excess. 
I mentioned the wing on this is a blue hackle and a red hackle, and then there's a shoulder of a barred white and brown rough grouse or partridge. Now the recipe calls for two blue hackles, and then on the outside is one red hackle. I'm assuming that means each wing has two blue hackles right here. Got, I'm assuming it's for density and, and color. So each wing will have the two blue hackles, the one red hackle, and then the shoulder. I may be wrong on that. It may be that the recipe, when it says two blue hackles, is simply one blue hackle on each side, and then one red hackle on the outside, then the shoulder and the cheek. If and when I find out the correct view on that, I will certainly pass that on. I've got my two wings here. These are already pre-assembled. I'm going to match these up. I want to see if I can't make certain I get those tips nice and matched up like that. Trim away the excess rachis here. So I have just a little bit of a handle to tie those in. Tie these in one at a time. Take your time with this. I find that if you try to uh, force it a little bit, if you are too rough and holding those wings in, they'll tend to cock on you and move around. You can, before we finish this up right here, actually scooch those around just a little bit. So right here, they're not exactly standing right straight up off of the hook shank. So I'm just going to turn that just a little bit, just a nudge. So that when I anchor that down, I've got all of that really just nice and straight off of the hook shank. We'll use the orange thread here to clean this up. This is a Danville 3 aught monocord in orange, by the way. I don't think I had mentioned that earlier. So we want to make certain we're getting any of the underlying colors from the stems of those hackles covered up. And then we're going to smooth this off and make it fairly uniform. You could try to flatten this out a little bit. Monocord does not flatten very well. And I'm going to put in about a five or six turn whip finish. Secure the orange thread. Now I will change over to the black thread finish this off. I'm using a Danville 6 aught in black. As I've done in other videos, I'm going to start behind, or I should say at the rear of the head here. You generally want to have each band be about a third of the length of the head.
take your time with this because you you want to cover up any of the orange with the black but you don't want to put so many thread wraps in that you're bulking it up in the back and you end up with a black kind of bulge in the head in the rear or in the front you just take your time with it I can flatten this out a little bit. Put a four or five turn lip finish in. I'll trim away my thread. Now I'll reattach right behind the eye of the hook and do the front band. And making certain that you're getting everything covered up without adding a lot of bulk to it. I often find that on the bottom side or the opposite side, I have some little gaps I have to fix up, and that's kind of natural. It's a thin thread, and on the side you're not seeing. Another interesting, if you notice here, I have a bump. The 3.0 mono is a little bit thicker maybe than I should be using on this. Uh, it does bulk up if you're not careful. A little bit of a bump right here, but because I built this up a little bit, I actually have just a little bit of a low spot right there. As a fishing fly, that is not going to make a bit of difference. If you're going to frame it, you know, might just be aware of that. Maybe next time, if you tie another one, just be a little more careful. Or get, um, if you're going to give it a nice glossy head, then just make certain that you get some in there. You'll kind of smooth that off and it'll be less obvious. So there's a little head cement to soak down in there. I will come back and I will put some clear lacquer on the Red Devil and it will be done. I usually put maybe three to four coats. It doesn't give it a, a, a wide, or I should say thick glossy head to it, but it will gloss it up enough and certainly seal it up enough that it'll make it very durable. So that is Carrie Stevens' Red Devil Handsome Little Fly. Thanks for watching today. Thank you for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned a new pattern, at least a tip or trick here and there. If you'd like to help Dress Irons, you can like, comment, share, subscribe, all those wonderful things for the video. You can also head out to DressedIrons.com where you can buy flies, tools, stickers, and merch, or you can join a growing community over on Locals at the Dressed Irons Fly Tying Guild. You can also donate to Dressed Irons if you want through the link at the bottom of the description. I thank everybody for their ongoing support as it really does help the creation of these videos. 
But what's important is to remember, only fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Thank you.